Greg Patterson here from ANL Laboratories. Going to talk to you a little bit about uh, using plant analysis to monitor your crop in season and just how to interpret some of that information. Not quite as simple as the soil test to understand because of the relationships and some of the interactions between plant nutrients. But I'd like to just go through why we do it and, and what we're looking for. So why plant analysis? Well, first of all, we want to look at what are the, the deficiencies in the crop that are causing issues with that crop going forward and, and maturing. Uh, allows us to put together cost-effective treatments, um, analyze the extent of the deficiencies or, or what nutrient might be tying up the other nutrients, and basically removing a lot of the guesswork. So in plant analysis, first thing going forward, you have to start early. We need a proactive program starting early in the season. Um, sampling the most recently matured leaf is usually the rule of thumb, but we have a booklet that tells you what part of the sample to plant, if it's uh, petioles or, or leaflets. Um, again, like soils, you don't want to mix up the zones. You want to make sure you keep things uh, fairly uh, concentrated to certain zones or differences. Just like soil tests, if you mix up different soils, you're going to get different results. Same thing with plant analysis because it's growing in that soil. You always want to send us about half a pint of loosely packed leaf material. Again, in a paper bag. You don't want to pl pack, it, pack it in plastics because it probably will rot by the time it gets here. And then fill out the paperwork. Seems real simple, but you don't know how many samples you get to the lab and we don't even have your name on it, let alone what the crop was or the stage. Stage is really important to put on there because our ranges are based on stages. We have an extensive group of ranges from crop research we've done right from the time you grow the plant right through to actually the seed that you harvest. So, so we need to know what stage it's at. When we look at uh, plant analysis, the things we're looking for, and un unfortunately what everybody relies on is visual deficiencies. Time you see a visual deficiency, the damage is done. And we're going to talk about using plant analysis not for diagnostics as much as monitoring the crop. Uh, you don't put a fungicide on after the, the disease is hit. You know ahead of time that disease is coming and you do it proactively. We want to do the same thing when we're talking about plant analysis. We want to be proactive and avoid the visual deficiencies because once we see visual deficiencies, the damage is done. Another one we want to look at is hidden hungers, and if you've done a good job with keeping track of your crop history, your soil test information, your, your observations of the crop, you know that these things are out there. And the hidden hungers are the ones that really don't exhibit themselves visually, but they're robbing you from uh, production and quality at the end of the season. The big one that's a, the, the worst one I think that we have to deal with is this optimal uh, nutrient demand by crops. And this is where you put the crop in the ground, it comes up beautifully, everything's fantastic, the crop sets up for a fantastic yield, so you walk away from it uh, thinking that everything's going to be great. And a couple weeks later you come back and it's, it's collapsed around your feet. This crop, because it's got such a potential for yield, relies on a little more TLC to get it to harvest. We really have to pay attention to these crops because they're using a lot of nutrients and something can run short real fast and basically uh, crop collapses. So we want to pay attention to that. So crop nutrition uh, basically starts with a good soil program and fertility program. Uh, from there we can identify some of these hidden hungers and put a, a proactive program in place to, to manage some of those. Uh, when we talk about foliar nutrition, this is going to benefit you more from a, a, a good healthy crop than it is trying as a rescue treatment. Usually rescue treatments, all that's going to do is make you sleep better at night. Uh, the damage is already done. So foliar feeding is a supplemental program to help us get these hot, heavy crops or these big crops to harvest in good shape. We also have to understand when we use things like foliar nutrition, the difference between leaf feeding and foliar feeding. Leaf feeding is an application of something like a triple 20 or a high-end analysis at low rates that's just promoting lush growth and keeping nutrients moving within the plant during dry weather conditions or when you apply fungicides just to help the plant get out of its shock or keep the root system alive in dry conditions so that when it does rain, it's ready to go and doesn't have to develop new roots. A foliar feeding program is addressing a nutrient deficiency and it's high-end analysis that, are, that can be applied at high rates to fix a nutrient disorder. We need to differentiate when we apply the, these products or select these products for use. So we look at the tissue sample. Again, it's different than a soil sample in the interpretation because of the interaction of the nutrients and how this thing actually responds. So there's a little bit of interpretation here and understanding of plant physiology and nutrient uptake that has to be uh, read into this. Uh, this is a, a typical analysis of, of tissue. Uh, we look at 
where this should be in the early season. All of these nutrients should be at the top. Um, when we look at all these little uh, bar graphs we've got here, think about each and every one of these bar graphs as being a fuel tank for that nutrient. And we want the fuel tank full as we start on this trip to grow this crop. So that's where we want to be in a high sufficient zone. Sometime during the grows, growing season, we'll see these nutrients drop off. Um, they'll drop as the plant starts using this. And what most people don't understand is that your heaviest crop, your best crop, will have your worst looking tissue sample. And that's because the crop is using the nutrient. If the crop is not growing and not producing a big crop, it's not going to use the nutrient, so these little, tiny little fuel tanks or bars are not going to drop off. So if you show me a sample that looks like this, I can tell you very quickly you've got a, a potassium problem here. But if you show me this sample mid-season, which is, this is pretty much mid-season, I can tell you you've got a crop there. The plant's not using the nutrients. Again, if you're doing a good job in growing your crop, a tissue samples should drive you crazy chasing some of these nutrients. So when you look at these, these nutrient bars or you look at using a tissue sample to monitor your crop, think about it as a fuel gauge. And if your fuel gauge is three quarters full and you're halfway through the crop, you're in good shape. But if your fuel gauge is on empty and you still even got a quarter of the way to grow, you're in trouble and you need to do something. So the key here is we want to top up these tanks before we get in a deficient zone. That's the point of no return. Uh, and keeping a tissue sample program allows you to monitor this and make that happen. So to look at understanding tissue analysis a little bit um, deeper, and this is a lot to go through in a, in a video like this, but the point I'm trying to make here is there's more to it than just looking at the numbers. This is a potato petiole from early season, and you can see here that we got some issues with uh, phosphorus levels being low. Now, what you don't know here, uh, going back to the soil sample, is this, this field has lots of phosphorus. Uh, this, this farmer's putting down 150 pounds of, of uh, P205 when he plants this crop, yet we're having trouble at this stage getting phosphorus into, into the zone it should be in. Um, you can see here magnesium levels are fairly decent, but this is actually, in fact, a magnesium deficiency. And I'll show, you that, I'll show you why here in a second. You look how a plant, any plant, actually any cell on this planet, actually takes on nutrient in a conversion of ADP to ATP. This plant's going to take up a salt. That salt of choice is potassium. It's going to put it inside the root system to start that osmotic pull of nutrients and water. Uh, that's an, a, an active process. It takes energy. And that energy comes from the conversion of inorganic phosphorus from ADP to ATP. In order to do that, the plant has to supply potassium to pre create the enzymes that, that facilitate that, uh, magnesium to bridge that gap to produce what is actually magnesium ATP, which is the energy drive for plants. So this is fundamental plant physiology, but it, it does explain the relationship between potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus, and some of the issues around reading this, this tissue sample, as I talked about. Magnesium is also center of the chlorophyll molecule, so magnesium is doing uh, double duty here. It's, it's working as chlorophyll and it's also working in a photophosphorylation process and conversion of phosphorus to ATP. If the plant picks up the fact that it's deficient in magnesium in the soil, it will start saving magnesium in the chlorophyll at the expense of the conversion of phosphorus. It wants to go to seed, it wants to try to mature, it needs chlorophyll to do that. So that's its kind of uh, number one priority. So you look at any plant, particularly the drain on a plant right at flowering time or as we go from vegetative to reproductive, you'll see these light yellow spots on the leaf here. That's the plant drawing magnesium out of the chlorophyll for the energy demand needed to flower. Uh, if there's enough magnesium available, those things uh, clear up and go away. If, they, if we don't have magnesium, they could become necrotic spots and open areas of infection. So what we want to see in a, in a, in a pediol of a potato, phosphorus start out here someplace around uh, 0.5 to 0.6, um, and it'll, it will quickly drop down as the crop grows. And again, uh, we want to maintain that level above 0.22 for long possible in this particular crop. Uh, but it's a challenge, but we want to see that. It needs to drop or we're not producing a crop. At the same time phosphorus is doing this, magnesium is, is starting about the same level, just a little bit below phosphorus, and it will slowly rise and, and increase as the season goes on as our phosphorus demand uh, drops off. If we see this happen too early, uh, magnesium phosphorus tra transact before crop uh, reproduction starts, uh, basically, that's an indication of low magnesium. The plant is storing magnesium 
and our phosphorus utilization is gonna, gonna be very poor. So we need to monitor that and make, make, uh, make that understood. So when you look at a tissue sample, you're looking at both phosphorus and magnesium. If you have lots of phosphorus in the system and magnesium is going up too quickly and, and phosphorus isn't going up, it's likely a magnesium problem. Um, so magnesium can be deficient if it's too high or too low. So it's one of those things that is hard to interpret uh, in a, on, a, on a plant analysis, but you need to understand that relationship. Another relationship you need to look at is a relationship between uh, nitrogen, potassium, and boron. On these tests we have, we have uh, our plant monitoring program. It shows you trends and the trends that these should move forward. This particular crop has a spike in nitrate nitrogen, and it's not because of overuse of nitrogen, which would be the thought process here. It's a fact that potassium and boron were, were low right from the start. We need good levels of potassium and boron to maintain the phloem. That's how the plant redistributes the sucrose from the leaf. If potassium and boron don't have, aren't there to, to do that, load the phloem with the sucrose or maintain the, the, the phloem, then the plant accumulates nitrates. A plant can't have high nitrates and produce carbohydrates. That's a, that's a quick indication. And we, on our plant monitoring um, analysis here, if you see nitrates peaking, you need to figure out why, and it could be this potassium boron relationship. So we use the, the tissue sampling program, our plant monitoring program, to monitor the crop going through the season uh, so if we can respond proactively to the needs of this crop. We can top up those fuel tanks and help this crop finish. So nutrition is important throughout the growing season. We need to identify these things be, become, before they become uh, a problem and top out those tanks. We, have cha we change right through the uh, growing season with, by growing stage, so we need to know what those stages are so we can give you the right information. Um, and keep in mind, particularly at that reproductive stage, this crop can run out of a, a nutrient very quickly because the energy demand changes so quickly at that stage and then as we finish the crop or bulk that crop up. Uh, nutritional stress does mean more disease, more insect pressure. Uh, so the, you know, the, the more reactive we are or proactive we are to keeping these fuel tanks topped up, the less pressure there'll be from insect and disease as well. So start early. Uh, we can do more early than we can do mid-season. We want to be on top of this right from the start. Um, that way can, we can put corrective pro uh, processes in place before they become yield limiting. Managing nitrogen is, is a no-brainer with crop, uh, tissue sampling. We can put nitrogen in a crop real quick. The other nutrients aren't quite so easy, but nitrogen is something that we can spoon feed very quickly. And then monitoring this crop throughout the growing season. So this is our plant monitoring program. Very simple to read. Gives you trends and, and a, an indication of which direction that nutrient is going before it even becomes critically deficient so you can respond even quicker. Uh, and again, it's a very useful program in your season. So conclusion. Good nutrition is important for yield and quality. Monitor the crop at critical stages, identify those, and identify the critical spots in the field you've identified. And look at environmental issues. Every, every season is different. And the higher or the bigger the crop yield potential, the more issues you're gonna have with supplemental feeding. Make sure you understand that and you, you watch that heavy crop or that crop that you have never grown before that looks beautiful this year. Uh, and then the selection of the right products to make sure that you can you can supplemental feed that crop. So thank you very much. I hopefully that helps you understand how to use a tissue sample.